The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we have this steering wheel for the PlayStation 1. I bought this at the flea market and it's thankfully broken. Why is that a good thing? Because that means we can hack it. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The steering wheel for the PlayStation 1 came with some pedals and I also bought an RC car. This is a Hirobo Rocken Vega, which was made in the 80s. It's one of the first four-wheel drive belt-driven RC cars. So that's pretty ancient. And today we will combine these two and some modern tech to make a remote control system from scratch that allows me to control this car with this controller. Of course, I will add some FPV gear, as you may have guessed. This, by the way, is the exact same FPV headset that I used for the VR Pi episode. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Link is in the description. If you want to directly read out the signals from a PS1 or PS2 controller, there is an ancient Arduino library for that. But in this case, this thing is broken beyond repair. So what we have to do is get rid of the innards and make our own circuitry. To make this work, we have to build our own RC transmitter and receiver from scratch. And I will do that with the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010. Two of these will create a 2.4 GHz network. Let's look at the basic concept of how this will work. The steering wheel and also the pedals are basically just potentiometers. One for the steering wheel, one for the brake pedal and one for the accelerator or the gas pedal. We could read these with any microcontroller, for example this Arduino Nano, and use that data to transfer it over USB, serial, or any other protocol, or use some wireless components to make this talk to another Arduino. But for this project, I want to use the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010, which has an integrated U-Blocks module that allows you to pass over encrypted Wi-Fi to another one of these modules. So we get a constant stream of data between these two and they support UDP, which is a transfer protocol that is pretty fast and snappy. Exactly what we need for such a project. These two Arduino boards form their own private network. One creates an access point and the other one is the client. This Arduino reads all the analog inputs, converts them into usable and sendable data, sends them over. This one receives the package, decodes it, moves the server accordingly and can also provide data back to the host. You can buy the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010 for about the same price as a brand name RC receiver. But with making our own RC system from scratch, we have the opportunity to use much more channels, give data back, make multipoint connections and even use repeater circuits to extend our signal. I restrict this tutorial to four channels just not to confuse you over the top and this will allow me to add FPV head tracking in the future. If you would like to see such a project, let me know in the comments. To ensure fast enough communication, we will use UDP to send the packet. We will also construct a custom packet that allows us to send all the necessary data at once. On the receiver side, we will deconstruct that packet and set all the servers accordingly. Sounds confusing enough? Let's look at the code. Before we start with all the coding fun, we have to do some setup. The Maker Wi-Fi 1010 belongs to the newest range of Arduino boards, so we have to install that in the IDE. Click on the Boards Manager, search for the SAM boards and it will show up. One click on Install and you're ready to go. We also need the Wi-Fi Nina or Wi-Fi Nina library, whatever you would like to call it, you will find that, of course, in the Libraries Manager. The U-Blocks module on the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010 has its own firmware. There is a known bug with version 1.0 and 1.1 where you may have trouble setting static IPs or opening access points. Make sure you update first to the version 1.2. This is easily done by loading the example from the Examples tab 
flashing that onto your Arduino and use the built-in update firmware tool of the Arduino IDE. This is the sketch for the host client built into the steering wheel. This is based on the example for UDP sending and receiving provided with the Wi-Fi Nina library. First, we have to include all the necessary libraries. Then we declare our secret passphrases for the network, which gets stored in the secret tab. This is a much safer way to do that. It's not retrievable from the Arduino once programmed. We have to set up static IP addresses for the car and for the wheel and also ports. Then we need some variables. The packet buffer is for incoming data. The packet is for data to be sent. These are both 13 bytes long, 12 bytes for data. The 13th byte is the null terminator. Then we have to declare a few pins, steering, gas and brake pin. All our analog inputs connected to a potentiometer that is connected to ground and 3.3 volts because the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010 only allows 3.3 volts on their pins like the Raspberry Pi and unlike the Arduino Uno or other Arduino boards. We have to declare a lot of variables. These are all needed for calculations later in the code. We start the UDP server and engage the setup. Set all our pins to the desired modes. Serial is only needed for debugging. There are a lot of commented sections in the code. Those are used for debugging. You can use them as you like to see what's going on in the code at the specific point. This is also needed for debugging and it allows you to know when your firmware is not compatible. We configure the Wi-Fi to use a static IP declared earlier in the code. Then we begin the Wi-Fi as an access point. While this access point is creating, we have to wait about 10 seconds and then it should work. We begin sending our UDP commands at the local port earlier specified. Now we enter the loop. This is only needed if you want to receive incoming data. It's basically used for FPV to get uh, motion tracking of the FPV goggles put into the host and sent on to the car. So this is basically not used in this project, but maybe will be used later. I kept it in the code for you so you can think around with it and see how it would work. We have to read all the data. So we do an analog reading on every pin and map that to a value the servers can use. It's a range from 0 to 180. This serial print and delay is only for debugging. We do that on all the pins, but for gas and the brake pin, we have to do an additional step. We combine those two and then map that value to 0 to 180 again, because it could result in a negative value. Then we convert all the integers into three digit strings, which are specified in the sprint function. Then we build the packet use the sprint function again to make a string out of all these values in a certain order, the steering, the ESC, and then the two values that are only needed for FPV head tracking. So basically these are four channels. That's why it's 12 bytes, four times three, plus the 13th byte for the null terminator. Then we open the UDP port, write the packet, and close the UDP port again. Now it's about the UDP receiver. We also have a main tab and a secrets tab. This is also based on the same example provided with the Wi-Fi Nina or Wi-Fi Nina library. First, we have to include all the needed libraries. We also need the servo library. We have the same credentials as before, stored in the secrets tab, same ports. Basically, this is all the same. Here is where it gets different. These are the variables needed for the servos and we have to attach these servos to their respective pins. Then we configure the Wi-Fi settings to use the static car IP, and we try to connect to the SSID specified in the secrets tab, which is the steering wheel. We wait until that has happened, and then we center all the servos. This is a visual indication that the car is basically ready to receive commands. In the loop, we wait for incoming packets and we have to make sure that the packet has 13 bytes. So we won't receive a partial packet or an invalid packet or some malicious stuff. We only want a 13 byte package in the specified manner. Then we read the packet buffer and map these values to our respective ESC values. So we have to read the first digit, put that into the SDR value, then add the second digit, add the third digit, and that will make up 
our first value that we have to pass on to the ESC. Same for all the other values. So you can see these are all mapped to specific points in the packet. Then we convert these values to integers so we can use them for math. And then we set these servos to these respective values. So we do that for every value that gets received, convert that to usable data and set the servo accordingly. That was a lot of code. As you've seen, I left a lot of stuff in there and just commented it out so it won't interfere with our project today. But you can tinker around with that and add a lot of more stuff to it. You can also make multi-point connections to different vehicles or to more than one controller. So be creative with that. You can download that code freely on element14.com forward slash presents. Link is in the description. Enough theory. Let's crack this thing open and mount the Arduino into it. There is plenty of room inside the steering wheel to mount our components. I also want to use the original cable that connects the pedal to the steering wheel, just for convenience. So I need to find out the pinout, map that to my Arduino sketch accordingly and mount everything inside the wheel. As power source, I use a standard model aircraft or model car LiPo that is just connected to an adapter that allows me to use the original power input of the steering wheel. For the receiver, I just solder up some perf board with connectors, mount them on the Arduino Maker Wi-Fi 1010, use some shrink wrap to isolate it, and then put that into my 40-year-old remote-controlled car. Connect that to the servo and the ESC with 3-pin adapters, connect the battery and of course, our race car needs a shell, so it looks like a car. I'm a big fan of Initial D, a 90s anime about street racing. And I tried to recreate the main car of the anime, uh, but it ended up as a strange mashup of the main character Takumi's car, which is a tofu delivery car, and Itsuki's car, which is a Toyota uh, Levin. And this is a Levin with the markings of the Toyota Trueno of Takumi. So it's not screen accurate, but it's fun enough for me. On the first quick test run, a plastic part broke. I could fix that with some super glue and baking soda in a manner that resembles binder jetting, which is a kind of 3D printing. So that worked pretty great. It's just putting super glue onto it, sprinkling baking soda and doing that over and over again to form a new plastic part. This worked pretty good. If you want to uh, see a project with DIY binder chatting in the future, that may be a project. Leave that in our suggestion box at element14.com forward slash suggestion box. Okay, I think the project is ready. Let's test this out on the racetrack. Had a little mishap, 40 year old plastic is pretty prone to breakage, especially if you run the car at zero degrees Celsius, which is freezing cold. But fortunately, it's not my only car. We also have this tiny rally car. It's piloted by Kumamon. And I also have mounted the FPV gear in the front outside of the shell, so we may get better view. And this one is especially designed for night racing, which would also fit the anime theme better. So let's do a night race.
Today we have converted a broken old PlayStation 1 controller into an RC transmitter and we also made our own RC receiver from scratch. This is a system that allows more channels, multi-point connections and data transmission in all directions, which is pretty cool. I would like to add more features to this, like FPV head tracking as mentioned before and a lot more. What are your ideas what we could add into the system? I would like to make this maybe an open standard so everybody could use that. Let us know on the Element 14 suggestion box. Link is in the description. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me. Which is piloted by Kumamon and I add the FPV girl, uh, FPV girl, uh, Arduino Maker 1010 Wi-Fi, oh god. That was a lot of code. You have seen that I have lost, uh, that was a lot of code. You see that I left a lot of stuff in there and just commented, commented, comment, commented, I'm not overbelichted. Ah, wieder. I'm not overbelichted.